really love our next story. It features one of the bravest of all the brave survivors we've ever profiled. She's just a little girl, but twice she's had to dig deep and find the strength to face down a stone-cold killer. Our Pat Malama shows us how she met a very special guardian angel who gave her the gifts of hope and healing. And he, like, strangled me. He flipped both my wrists. You can barely see them, thank God, they're going away. And then he slit my throat and got that scar there, which went across. The knife that he used, it was like a butcher knife, and it was like that long. With the blade, it'd be like that. I mean, with the handle, it'd be like that long. And he, but I only saw that much of it. And they asked me if it was a pocket knife. I'm like, no. These two girls were strangers until the physical and emotional scars of violent crime brought them together. My knife was really big. Yeah, so was ours. It went all the way through to my back. And it was like one centimeter from hitting my spine. For one girl, the nightmare is far from over. She has one more painful chapter to write. The one to guide her through is the one who has been there before. 15-year-old Christy Reed came home from school last year in Manassas, Virginia, to find her older sister Stacy slashed to death. The killer was the man in this police tape, Paul Warner Powell. After murdering Stacy, he then bound, slashed, and strangled Christy, assuming he left her for dead. He was wrong. Christy lived and bravely testified against Powell. In May, he was convicted of capital murder. He can never hurt anybody else. And she knows that, and I think that's what she thrives on now. And the fact that she can reach out and help somebody else. And no one needs that help more than 11-year-old Crystal Searles. On New Year's Eve, 1999, in the quiet border town of Del Rio, Texas, Crystal was on a sleepover at the home of her friend, Katie Harris. Around 3 in the morning, someone broke into the home. Crystal awoke to the sound of her friend Katie being attacked. She then witnessed the bearded intruder murder Katie and make his way toward her. I just laid there and then he was coming toward me. And then um, he just leaned over the bed and um, I tried pushing the knife away with my hand and I got cut on my hands. And then he got my throat and slit it. Crystal feared Katie's mother and siblings who were sleeping in the other bedrooms would also be hurt or dead she decided to find help. Crystal waited for the attacker to leave, then walked a quarter mile down the road where neighbors called police. It was Crystal's written recollections of the attacker's face that led to the arrest of professed multiple killer Tommy Lynn Sells just two days later. That arrest came January 2nd, but Tommy Lynn Sells would not be brought to trial until September. Crystal Searles had nine long months to contemplate one more harsh reality. She would have to face Sells in court, his icy blue eyes staring back at her. Crystal's mom knew the fear her daughter felt, but there was little she could do to help Crystal. It's all inside her, and she has to deal with it on her own. And that, that hurts as a mother. That, that hurts deep. Imagine how frightening a courtroom can be for a child, especially one who's been attacked. And remember, Crystal Searles will be right in the witness box and just a few feet away at the defendant's table, Tommy Lynn Sells. We knew Crystal needed help, and we knew exactly where she could find it. That is why America's Most Wanted brought Christy and Crystal together for what would become a life-changing union. This is yucky, but this was way up, and it's getting smaller here, but larger here, and that's it. First, they needed to talk about the physical wounds that almost took their lives, the deep scars that mark their young bodies. Somewhere over here, it's, like, really big. So, like, I guess it's this one. I don't know what side it's on. <laughs> but it's, like, yeah, I think it's this one. I don't know. So we went... <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, don't, I really don't know. How many stitches did you have or sutures? Or I had 60 stitches in my neck, 7 in my wrist, and 25 staples in my stomach. Do you sleep in your own bed? Yeah. I 
sometimes do, but I'm sometimes scared, so I sleep with my mom. Yeah, my mom had to sleep with me for like three months. And then after that, I slept with the light on forever. And I, can, I still cannot sleep by the door. It just uh, creeps me out. They had both suffered tremendously, but Christy had already testified against her attacker. Crystal had not yet faced hers. It was time for her lesson. Not to do. do you have any tips or anything like Don't look at him? <laughs> I don't know, because I, I really didn't have anybody help me. I just had to do it on my own. But just concentrate, like, concentrate on your, like, your friend's name was Katie? Yeah. Like, concentrate on her, because, like, you're helping her and yourself, like, by putting this guy away or whatever so just like think think that she's still well think that she's still here and like they're like helping her it's scary but once you get it out you're like you feel a lot better you're like that feels good <laughs> yeah she's like you got it out so. As Crystal listened, her eyes began to follow a silver cross ring on Christy's hand. It was given to Christy by an aunt to give her strength in court. Whenever the testimony got tough, she would twist the ring. Crystal's attention kept turning to that ring as Christy continued to offer her wisdom. It was really hard for me because I didn't... I asked for him not to be in the courtroom, but they couldn't do it unless he said something bad or you know, looked at me weird. Yeah, I'm way scared because he's going to be sitting right there. Yeah, it's like he's sitting right here and then you're like sitting right in front of him. As the day moved on, the girls would take little breaks, turning back into little girls. <laughs> Before resuming their talks about the little annoyances, like the way people talk to their neck and not their face. They also talked about their great big fears. Sometimes I'm scared, like, he's going to get out, and then he's like, then they're going to call us and say, he's out, come and look for me. So that's why I sort of kept my hair so I could be different and he wouldn't notice. From their individual hells, they had emerged as soulmates. And before it was time to part, the bond was sealed with a touching message for Christy. And wise, and even though you don't have halo or wings, you're an angel in human disguise. And what would be the first of two gifts for Crystal? My blossom makes. You noticed something happening here today between them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. They share something nobody else can ever share. Crystal must now go home and face the task in front of her. To confront the man who she witnessed kill her best friend in cold blood. To go to battle with the devil himself. I don't want to see him ever again, but I have to, uh... Now, here's the second half of our story. Little Crystal Searles is about to testify against the monstrous man who nearly took her life. It was now time for a tiny girl to confront a huge force of evil. She had watched him kill her good friend, Katie Harris, then try to kill her. Crystal Searles had absorbed guidance from her new young friend and mentor, Christy Reed a girl who had survived the same kind of vicious attack. But as everyone approached the courtroom, the question would be, was Crystal strong enough to go against a madman and self-professed multiple killer named Tommy Lynn Sells? The night before the trial in Del Rio, Texas, Crystal and her mother were still nervous. Christy Reed and her mom were back in Virginia, but they had asked America's Most Wanted to deliver a package to Crystal in Texas. We were told it had to be done before the trial. And I am to tell you that this is to help guide you for tomorrow, okay? Come on. was the cross ring, the same ring that had given Christy so much strength when she had testified against Paul Warner Powell, the same ring that had fascinated Crystal. 
and I was just kept looking at it and telling her how pretty it was. As you face this journey from the moment you begin, <laughs> know that God will guide you, and you'll have the strength to win. The next morning, September 12th, Tommy Lynn Sells entered the courtroom sporting a blue suit and a new haircut. But Crystal knew the real evil that was sitting across the room. Let me have the defendant rise and face the jury and all that. Sells was charged with attempting to kill Crystal Searles. He was also charged with the sexual assault and murder of Crystal's friend, Katie Harris. Just as the trial began, Sells pleaded guilty to the attempted murder of Crystal. Sells' plea was a desperate attempt to avoid the death penalty by trying to show the jury he was taking some responsibility for his crimes. The prosecution still wanted to prove he was guilty of the crimes against Katie and ultimately get Sells sentenced to death. So the trial began. For the next several days, a broad range of emotion overwhelmed the courtroom. What I was told was an intruder had entered the premises and, uh, My daughter was, uh, gone. They discovered that it was my own daughter who was in the house. What did you then do? They just... I... I just cried and cried. The gruesomeness of the crime scene photo stung as deeply as the testimony. Is this how we want our children to end up dying? Then it was time for the star witness to take the stand. Would you tell us your full name, please? Crystal Foy Searles. She must relive the nightmare, detail by bloody detail, of the horrid attack on her and her friend, Katie Harris. Were you ever awakened during the night? Yes. What was it that awakened you? Katie's voice saying help. His hand was over her mouth. Whose hand was over her mouth? His hand. The man with the blue jacket and the glasses? Yes. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Tommy Lynn Sells. He was standing behind her with his, with his hand over her mouth and the knife right here. Katie was... He was... Well, take it down. Let's, let's uh, just have a uh, brief recess then uh, at this time. Bailiff, if you'll just uh, retire the jury. When okay. Crystal continued her testimony, she had composed herself enough to tell exactly what Sells had done to her friend. What happened next? He moved the knife and slit her throat. Cell sat stone-faced during Crystal's display of her deep wounds to the jury. The jury would not rely on Crystal's testimony alone. There were two other key pieces of evidence. Two taped police confessions of Tommy Lynn Cells. And I opened the window all the way up, well, about like this. Uh-huh. And, and that's how I did. Okay. Can you do that again for me? Are you willing to do that again? Yes, sir. First, he matter-of-factly described his attack on Crystal's friend, Katie. I woke this girl up. I, I cut her bra, and, and I cut the side of her, uh, whatever she was wearing. I, Shorts. And shorts. Yeah, yeah. She made some comments. Said, you didn't have to cut me or something like that. And I said, just shut the hell up. What did Katie do? What was she doing, if anything? She was struggling. She tried to resist a minute, or I say a minute, less than five seconds, and I just killed her. What kind of knife do you have? A uh, big, you a big butcher knife type. Okay. That damn knife was so sharp that it, it just didn't take a lot of force. I heard somebody say that they cut her fingers and off, but 
But I, if, if I did, I, I didn't mean to do that. I, I just meant to slit her throat. She was gasping for air, but she couldn't get any because all there was was blood. I think I done reached down there and done it one more time. Could I cut her some more? Yeah, oh. to make sure it was all the way. Yeah. It was a done deal. It was like dead man tell no tell, and, and I just killed her. Sells told police how he then turned his attention to Crystal, the only living witness to Katie's murder. The little girl on, on top was like this petrified. I was really scared and I didn't know what to do. He started walking towards me. And, and, and I done dropped the first one. And I started to walk out the room. And I said, and, and I walked back over there to the top bunk. Did you say anything to him? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him I'd be quiet. I promise I won't. I won't say nothing. I'm. I'm not making the noises. It's Katie. The one wasn't, you know, being quiet. She was trying to draw attention. He said, "Move your hands." And why did he say, "Move your hands"? How? Will you show us how you had your hands? I had them up like this. And it, now it's like at the point you're, you're all pumped up. Can you tell us why you had your hands up close to your neck? Because I saw what he did to Katie and I was scared he was going to do it to me. When Crystal needed help, she found it on her tiny finger. The ring Christy had given her gave Crystal the courage to complete her mission. He reached over the ledge and took my throat. And I, I just, she, I thought, I thought it killed her. I just laid there and pretended I was dead. And tell us why you did that. Because if he knew I was alive, he would have came back and killed me for sure. The wisdom and clarity of an 11-year-old child had touched everyone in the courtroom. She had shown that with a little bit of help, a victim can break through the wall of fear. Well, Crystal, you can stand down then, and this completes your examination. Thank you, and you are excused. Too close. Don't relieve them. I'm happy. Angels and God are watching over me, so I know that I'm good. It's been a long, hard road for Crystal, but she did it. She came through all well, once again. Back inside the courtroom, Sells had only one hope, that the jury would spare his life. The decision came fast. First, the verdict. You, Tommy Lynn Sells, have been found guilty of the offense of capital murder. Yes. Then, the sentence. Do you find that there is a sufficient mitigating circumstance or circumstances to warrant that a sentence of life imprisonment rather than a death sentence be imposed. Answer. We, the jury, unanimously find and determine that the answer to this special issue is no. His fate was sealed, death for Tommy Lynn Sells. But he was not yet permitted to return to his jail cell to contemplate his death sentence. One more thing had to be, needed to be done. This time, it was Crystal's mother's turn. Excuse me, Tommy. I've never heard you say you were sorry. And I honestly believe that the only thing you're sorry for is the fact that my daughter, Crystal, lived. You're a coward. And you only prey on the defenseless. You may have injured her body, but you'll never, ever injure her spirit. Sheriff, you can take your prisoner then into custody and remove him from the courtroom. The wretched image of Tommy Lynn Sells may torment Crystal Searles for the rest of her life, but another image will far overshadow it. Believe in tomorrow and what it will bring. Let a hopeful heart carry you through, for things will work out if you trust and believe there's no limit to what you can do. I'm so proud of that brave little girl. She had to overcome her fear and do what we all have to do. Stand up against the cold-hearted criminals that walk our streets. Look them right in the eye and say there's no place for you out here anymore. You can try and clean yourself up, but you're not fooling anybody. And I'm not scared of you.
Well, God bless her courage.